Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now, I've done lots of technical videos on the channel talking about stance, technique, setup, how we should be sighting the ball. Um, but in this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the biggest things that stops players from improving, and I'm seeing this problem all the time. So I'm gonna get into this video and explain exactly what that problem is. Now, obviously, snooker is a technical game. We've got lots of things to think about. I've done detailed videos talking about exactly how the grip works, our bridge length, um, where we put our head down on the cue, the fact that we stand up behind the shot and we sight shots. Uh, we've got all these things to think about. And I would say one of the biggest things that destroys a player's game or holds them back from improving further is concentrating too much on all of these technical things. So I'll see players when they're approaching the game that are walking into the shot and they're concentrating on placing the right foot perfectly for a, a right-handed player. So placing the right foot perfectly, then getting the left foot placed absolutely perfectly, thinking about exactly what the feet are doing. Then when they're down on the shot, they're starting to make sure that their elbow position is absolutely perfect. They're thinking about what they're doing with their grip at the back. And all of a sudden, what I'm finding with a lot of players when I'm doing my coaching sessions is our brain is overloaded with too many things to worry about. You've got all of these 20 thoughts in your head and in the end, it is not helpful. If you're doing the fundamentals well, then that is good enough. Now, one of the big key things I'm saying here is that actually, let's imagine we've got a list of important things we should be doing on the shot. So we've got how we stand, how we walk into the shot, our bridge length, our backswing, how fast it is, um, the pauses in the cue action, whether we pause at the cue ball, whether we pause at the back. And then you've got all these things. And then at the bottom of that list for a lot of players is actually potting the ball in front of them. Now, silly as that sounds, that's what's happening for a lot of players. They're getting held back because they're thinking of all of these technical things. And the last thing on that priority list is actually potting the ball. So what I'm trying to say to players is this thing at the bottom, potting the ball, must be moved to the top of the list. That has got to be your number one priority. What we're doing is we're trying to get the object ball into the pocket and obviously control the white. Then all of these other things we do around that, which is having air technique nice and neat, having a good bridge length, standing correctly, keeping still on the shot. We do those things as an added bonus to make ourselves really neat as players. So this is what I'm seeing very, very commonly, and it's actually holding players back because there's just too many thoughts in their mind at any one time. Okay, so with those things in mind, I've now got a straight ball to the middle pocket here. Now, I'm always doing this in my coaching sessions. So when I'm working with players on the table, I'll start off with a straight ball to the middle pocket here. This is almost like a nice foundational shot for a player. Then you can move on to playing a straight pink to the corner, pick the best side of the table for you based on whether you're left or right-handed. Then you can move on to either a straight green or a straight yellow. And then you can move on to a long straight blue. Those are the four levels I call it of straight queuing. Now, of course, with these things in mind about players getting distracted, the first thing that I'm always saying to a player that they must be concerned about is that this shot must look good in front of them. So it doesn't matter how I stand, what I do, what I'm trying to do, is get this little wooden stick, which is our cue, placed on the line of the shot to pop this ball. Now, obviously, this one is nice and straight to the middle, so that's the line I'm trying to place the cue on. Now, when I get down, doesn't matter what my feet are doing and what my stance are doing, I just want this to look good to me. So the shot looks good to me, and then I can pull the cue back and play my shot. So it looked, it looked good, and it went in. Now, the second thing I would say on our priority list is cue control. So we've got Potting the ball is number one. The second priority that we must have as a player is controlling this cue. So it doesn't matter about all the other things about the stance for a second and those things, controlling the cue. That's what all top players will have in common. So technically, we then start to talk about things like pauses. So whether a player will pause at the cue ball, whether they'll pause at the end of their backswing, um, how fast the backswing is. But really, all you want to be concentrating on is just being smooth. For lots of different players, they have different pauses. So Sean Murphy's got a big backswing pause. Someone like Mark Allen, who's just won the UK Championship, he just brings the cue back and he doesn't really have a, a pause at the end of the backswing. But what they've all got in common is a nice smooth backswing and delivery. So then that's my second priority. So I'm thinking, right, I'll do my feathers up. And then when I'm happy, 
this comes back smoothly and then it goes forward smoothly. So that's what I'm trying to control. So those are your t first two things on the list. All the other things we then do to neaten up as snooker players are around those fundamental things. As I say, you've got to be really careful that you don't get it backwards, that you don't watch all these instructional videos, there's lots out there on YouTube, and you get distracted by doing all of these technical things and not actually worrying about just potting the ball in front of you. Then we can say, right, for a right-handed player, I can now start to get my right foot close to this line of aim. So I put my right foot there for consistency. I want to make sure that my right foot is going in the same place on every single shot. I don't want it placed in a random position. Does the right foot need to be millimeter perfect? Absolutely not. That is not gonna stop you from potting the ball. So I would be looking at this shot here, and then as a right-handed player, I'll try to walk into my shot and place my right foot on this line. Most important thing is that my heel is going on the line. Left foot's going a little bit in front, and then that makes me feel like, okay, I've got this nice fixed base to play a shot from. And all I'm trying to do here is almost form a tripod. Right foot on line, left foot a little bit in front, and then my bridge hand on the table forms those three key points on the table. Now, that's all you're trying to do with your stance. It does not need to be millimeter perfect. You won't start missing shots just because your right foot ended up or one millimeter to the right of the line or one millimeter to the left, and you won't miss shots because your left foot didn't end up perfectly. So it does not have to be millimeter perfect. So I would be walking into my shot, sliding down into it, my feet are forming that nice tripod, and I can pull my cue back smoothly and then play my shot. So that's why we're doing those things. But again, I think people get absolutely obsessed with it being absolutely perfect each time. Then one more technical thing that we'll talk about in this video here is then we just try and have a, a grip so we're not doing too much squeezing and over tightening. Obviously on long, deep screw shots, we might need to add a, a bit of extra grip pressure there. But for most of our shots, we're trying to just have this grip nice and relaxed. We start with about a four or five in terms of pressure and we try and finish with that. So that's just another layer. Underneath, potting the ball, having a smooth cue action, getting a consistent stance so it's not random each time, and then being relaxed, I think, is key. And the grip is a very important key part of that. So then, um, so then I can do all those things. I can look at the shot, looks pretty good to me from here. Walk in, go down to the shot, keep my grip nice and relaxed, pull the cue back smoothly, and play my shot. So as I always say everybody, I really hope you found this video useful. Um, I really wanted to make this one because I just wanna make people aware that um, you have not got to be a robot and be playing absolutely perfect snooker and looking like a machine each time in order to improve your game. I think people, as I say, they get very, very distracted by all these technical things and then the bottom of the priority becomes actually potting the ball in front of them. So there's a whole game to learn that's very, very technical about whether you play with side, whether you come off the cushions with side, whether you avoid side, all of that stuff I cover in detail in my sessions. And once you can relax a player to know that for a lot of people, not for everybody, you have to get that nice foundation. But for a lot of players, they do get to the standard where they've got their fundamentals in place. And then you want to start, start talking about all the technical things that are going to help players to improve and to start making bigger breaks. So as always, if you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just really helps me to keep all this content coming. If anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one training sessions, I'm working on this very table that you can see in this video here. This has just had a brand new top of the range cloth put on this table, so it's playing really, really nicely now. Professional lighting, ball cleaning machine. Get in touch, I'd love to help you personally with your game. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one, everybody. Cheers.